welcome to service. It's great to be gathered with you in Christ's name this day. We give thanks as we are gathered together here uh, for the baptism also of William Jacob Barrett. And so we give thanks that he is receiving the sacrament of holy baptism this day. And we give thanks that he shares in the same promise of you and me. And we give thanks that we are called together by the same gospel. We are sustained and kept by God's grace for us. And we celebrate that in this day. So just as a way of welcoming you, we give thanks for you being here at St. John Lutheran in Montgomery. For those who are gathered in place and those also who are gathering online as we continue to share our service uh, with those who aren't able to make it at this time. So we give thanks as we are called and gathered together on this day. Just a few announcements for the care of the congregation. Uh, during the service on Sunday, uh, the 19th, we'll be having... Uh, that our third graders receive their Bibles, and that's something as part of our congregation outreach and gift from the congregation to uh, those members who are in third grade, they receive Bibles, and it's a part of a tie-in that will appear within our uh, baptismal liturgy today of placing the scripture within the hands of the little ones, and we give thanks as we come alongside them. So they'll be receiving their Bibles on uh, Sunday the 19th. And also, uh, Sunday the 19th in the evening, uh, our confirmation students, the 10th graders and their mentors, are going to be gathering together to make their stoles. And it's always kind of a neat process of seeing what they'll put on their stoles and how they tie it into uh, their time together with their mentors, but also the whole of their Christian faith. And so we give thanks as they continue to meet for that. Our 7th and 8th grade confirmation class is uh, it's just started last Wednesday, but we have a couple people who weren't able to be there, so we welcome those who are uh, wanting to come and to be able to share together in that time with, with us as we discuss it. Um, we have a Wednesday morning Bible study where we at 10 o'clock, so I invite you to come and join us for that. And then also, as a continuation, uh, last month we had received a, a, a based on an offering from uh, the European Roastery up in we set her uh, to put labels on coffee bags uh, for uh, one of their companies that they're actually supplying the coffee for. We put labels and tin ties on it, and it's a nice little stewardship project that we did. Uh, we got 24 cases together, and we actually put them together, and uh, it was about $720 that we're going to be receiving from that. And so they said, want some more. And so we actually have get a little more time. We have about two weeks in order to be able to get that first one in, which was a little tough over Labor Day weekend and other things. But we am hoping that up to anybody who wants to come and join, the church will be open on Monday, uh, Wednesday, and, and Thursday from 9 to 3. Whoever wants to come in, or if you want to come in at a different time, too, we can make sure that we make adjustments for that. So just want to open that up and once again give thanks as we especially for those who have helped out and put that first one together. So uh, we do have some announcements in the bulletin. I'll leave those for you to take a look at. Uh, but just to continue to look at, we are still looking for a couple additional uh, uh, teachers to help out with our Sunday school. And so if you or anybody you know may be interested in that, please uh, let us know. So as uh, we gather together this day, I invite you to please stand as you're able, as we open up with our confession of forgiveness of sins. We gather this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, so that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, but what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus 
since Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As I call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll continue our gathering hymn, which is All Are Welcome.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Where do they come from? 
Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Continue our service with our gospel acclamation. Please stand. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I like these readings because we're back into Mark, and Mark is one where he puts the foot down on the gas pedal and you just go through it. And I think for our lectionary, the people who put our revised common lectionary together, they thought even Mark was a little bit too slow. So they've actually taken out a lot of these things and put in uh, some of these spots where they just kind of jump from one to the next. And actually, we were missing just a lot of things. Uh, just prior to this, uh, last week we mentioned they jumped to verse, from verse 1 to verse 27 in order to actually get to Peter declaring uh, who he was and asking them who he was. And they, he declared that he was the Messiah, but before that, we had another feeding practice, feeding of 4,000. Our week this week starts the same way. As we continue to look at where we start, not on verse 1, but on verse 30. So I invite you to go back and take a look at that over this week because it does come a little bit out of time. We like to have order within our church year, and so uh, the reading that was prior to this, the beginning of chapter 9, is the transfiguration, but Jesus being transfigured before James and John and Peter up on the mountaintop. Well, that happens in January, so let's move on ahead. And so one of the things that we need to do is this fits right in order with where Jesus is going. He's going from this confession of who they are, who they think they are as the Messiah, to saying that he, before, was going to be betrayed by those who were in leadership, that he was going to be handed over, that he was going to go through great suffering, that he was going to be killed, and that he would be raised again. Well, what do we find within our gospel today? But once again, we're brought right back 
Right back to where Jesus once again is telling his disciples for a second time what is going to be happening. He's telling them of what is going to happen to them, and they're like, before, oh, this can't be. They've shifted gears within our gospel now from moving, quote, this can't be to, well, if you're going to die, who's next? Kind of looking at who is going to be second in command. So if this does happen, then they step into the position of where Jesus is. And we're brought back to the reality of how quickly we covet something else that belongs to somebody else. And we shut our ears down from hearing the gospel that is within it. Yes, being betrayed into human hands. Yes, being killed. And after three days being dead in the grave, to be raised again. Something that was never heard of or thought of before. Nobody rose from the day dead after three days. So they went into this preparedness plan of what they should do. And we at times fall right in line with our, the disciples as we continue to within our lives take those things that seem out of control and try to put order back into it this uh, gospel that we have today is filled with yes the little child and it's wonderful that we have a baptism here as we hear the promises spoken over a child and welcomed just as they are no years of confirmation has William taken yet, and yet he is bestowed with the promise that he is a child of God. He's been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. What a promise. So we hear this, and we'll bring that back in because we have those little children that are welcomed. But I want to first go to my weakness week. And usually I don't do a lot of this because it's kind of strange for me to talk about myself, but... Within this past week, we had something that fit in with the pecking order. Oh, about three weeks ago, we thought it was a great idea to buy two more fish to put in our three-gallon fish tank. And the two fish that we had pre-COVID were these two little glowfish, these little animals that were doing well. They outlived two sets of guppies. They lived out another set of fish. They were hardy. They were there. And we introduced two new fish to their world. And shortly after they were introduced, the two new fish uh, weren't behaving very well. The one blue fish was hovering over the top of the other fish as they were down on the bottom of this tank. They were in putting their enforcement of power to say, we are new. And we are here, and we are going to take over. You can't eat without us telling you you can eat. So we hear of this, and then the other one was uh, a little bit worse. This little red one that we had was one that he followed the other ones with, would bump into the other fish. He, when food was put in, he would chase the other fish away. Well, we went online and figured out what you do with fish. Well, you take the fish that are actually behaving wrongly, and you put them into another tank, and you may be able to reintroduce these fish once again. But in the process of doing that, and we took out both of them for a time, uh, what ended up happening, we lost one of the other ones, the, the one of the yellow fish. They ended up dying because it got an infection, and it was one of those things that it wasn't nice because that fish had been through us through COVID, for goodness sakes. This had been a long time that we had this fish, and it was a part, important part to life. He wasn't ever one that was actually glorifying. In fact, they were kind of a little bit neurotic because every once in a while they twitch down at the bottom of the tank. And we wonder, are we going to make it? But they would. But this little one ended up dying. And so we were sitting there with uh, two fish. The blue one started behaving just a little bit better, but was still every once in a while hovering over the other one. But the red one we had to take out. We put him in another tank. We were sitting there going, what do we do? What do we do? We have the tank that we <laughs> put him in was a tank that we had for a beta. Uh, we had two betas, and both of them didn't make it. Uh, but this beta, we had this little tiny tank 
that we had, and it was about a gallon size tank. We thought, you know what? And this red fish, yes, it was one who was probably not deserving of anything else, but you know what? We probably need to go and get supplies to help this fish live. So what happened was yesterday we went to Pets Park and we were going, okay, maybe what we need is maybe just maybe some air for it to breathe. You know, maybe some little tiny things to help it out. And once we got to Pets Park, we were reminded of something that we call to stewardship. Stewardship of a fish. Even a fish that was brought into the core, we had to be able to take care of because this little tiny fish needed a $17 heater. <laughs> and this little fish needed a filter to make sure that it would filter. And we felt sorry for it being by itself, so we bought it a little tiny snail to go along with it. Which probably confused the fish because we had a black snail and this one was white, so who knows what's going through this fish's mind. But by the time we walked out of Pets Park yesterday, we had $43 that we spent for a fish that we were trying to figure out what to do with. Welcome to our gospel. Welcome to our gospel as we are those who are invited into a world where we misbehave badly. Yet God has shown his love for us by sending his son to die for us. As much as we want to stop that from happening, as much as we may want to replace Christ, this is what God has done for us. This little tiny fish who deserved probably nothing more than death was brought a sense of grace. A grace to actually be like us. And as a parent and as a pastor who's a parent, we did. We were called to understand what God's grace was for this little tiny fish. We are called to understand that it doesn't matter how strong you are, how strong we think we are, how righteous we think we are, we are all in need of God's grace and love this day. So that's why it's important to understand a little child like William and others who are called here, and even if you're a oh, 92 year old William or a child, welcome. Because this is where Christ invites us to come into the midst of those, when we think that we are those who are outcasts, we're set in the family of God. I have had children, and I've had children who are set in the front of me, and I know what comes out of children, spit and other bodily fluids, and this is one of those things where we understand that it is in this that we are seen, and that we are received, and then we are to call one another to do the same thing. We are called to welcome in Christ's name because he has first welcomed us. What a blessing to know that no matter how we old, old we are, as soon as we have had this word spoken to us, this is who we are. May we continue to have God's grace poured upon us. Even when we're rock little we're in a fish, as we continue to find a pecking order, may we be reminded that we are all sinners, that we have been saved and redeemed, and there is not one of us that is righteous before God, not one. That we have received this grace upon grace, and we've been welcomed as a little child here today. We're going to welcome you in just a little bit, William. But welcome all of you to this place where we are called one in Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join together in singing our hymn of this day. Our hymn of this day is, I want to walk as a child of the light.
at this time and invites the William and his family and the sponsors to come up for baptism. We have within your pew the bulletin which says the order of service for baptism, so please follow along. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father has liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of the fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By water and the Holy Spirit with God's word, we are made members of the church which is the body of Christ. As we live with him and with his people, we grow in faith and obedience to the will of God. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? In Christian love, you have presented your son for holy baptism. You should therefore faithfully bring him to the services of God's house, and teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As he grows in years, you should place into his hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for his instruction in the Christian faith, that living in the covenant of his baptism and in communion with the Church, he may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. You promise to fulfill these obligations. Sponsors. Do you promise to nurture this child in Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Holy Spirit and to help him to live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? People of God, do you promise to support William and pray for him in his new life in Christ? <laughs> I now ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to your right hand. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks. For in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and you created the heavens and the earth. By the gift of water, you nourish and sustain all living things. By the waters of the flood, you condemned the wicked and saved those whom you chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by a pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery and into freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of the one death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death 
and has opened the way to joy and the freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of kingdoms and cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations by baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit so William, who is here baptized, may be given new life, washing away the sins of he who is cleansed by this water, and bring him forth as an inheritor of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to new life through this holy sacrament. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon William, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. God, to the giver of all life, look with kindness upon Kevin and Jill. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for William. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally with their son the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through baptism, God has made this new brother a member of the priesthood that we share in Christ Jesus, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming words to all the world. Let us now welcome William. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission that we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming words to all the world. Peace be with you. Also Please share this gift of peace with one another. Now let us continue our service with an offering for the care and concern of ministries of this congregation, for this community which we're part of the world which we then sent out.
children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of community, we pray for the church around the world. Unite us in our love for you. Help us to overcome our divisions, that we may encourage, be encouraged to work together for your sake. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, we pray for this hurting earth. Be with those who are affected by earthquakes and hurricanes, fires. Be with those who are displaced due to war. May continue to be with those who are seeking shelter. May continue to bless this earth, and may we continue to be stewards of it as we turn to those who are farmers and ranchers as models for us to how to tend and take care of. May we be invited to take care of even the littlest things that you place in our hands. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, God of cooperation, we pray for the nations of the world in conflict. Inspire leaders to listen to each other and work towards peaceful solutions to disagreements. Protect the vulnerable, especially children who cannot find safety in their home or country. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of comfort, we pray for all who live with mental or physical or emotional illness. Help them find appropriate care. Bring healing and wholeness when a path seems so bleak. And Heavenly Father, we lift up to you Sandy Bauer, Matthew Mullen, Julie Miller, Harvey Chapman, Matthew Larson, Preston Fallington, Aubrey Rover, Jerry Smith, Cindy Lighthizer, Wayne Schoening, Jean Wong, Rich Fargo, Jackie Iver, Lucinda Rose, Dallas Porsche, Paul and Phyllis Swiderski, Lloyd Piscotchel, Milo Kuczynski, Lloyd Zaboda, Adeline Keeney, Terry Nish, Jean Hart, Ken Meyer, Katie Lockring, Diane Devine Schultz, Tom McLoon, Tom Trenda, Greg Blossing, Pastor Bob Boda, and Amy Corpius. We lift up to you those who come near, those who are needing healing. We ask that you continue to be with doctors and nurses, therapists, those who are continuing to treat care. May you watch over them. We ask that you continue to surround the EMTs and paramedics, the police officers and deputies who are called to care for this community. We lift up those who serve our country, especially those from our congregation. Be with Travis Ferguson, Cassidy Gilbertson, Ashley Moisky, Adam Vlasic, Sam Westerhouse, and Brandon Van Howen. And all that we lift up to you silently or loud. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of compassion, we pray for the young people of this congregation. Renew in us your call to welcome the children in our midst as they grow, strengthen their faith and their commitments to them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of consolation, we give you thanks for our loved ones who have died and rest in Christ. May we be comforted by the promise that we share that in life and death we are yours. May we be comforted with the words that we shall be united with Christ and all the saints around your heavenly throne. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Receive these prayers, Heavenly Father, and those that are on our hearts known only to you. Be with us as we call out to you in our time of need, knowing and trusting that you hear us in account of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll now continue our service with the great thanksgiving.
and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
be gracious unto you. May he lift his favor upon you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and share this good news. Praise Praise God. God.